All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I want to thank you all so much for joining me here today. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. Follow along with more garden adventures as we continue growing here on The Urban Gardener. We are in Southern California, LA to be specific, and we're here visiting with Kay Cottrell of the Late Bloomer Urban Organic Garden Show. And we're going to get around, check out her gardens here that she has here grown in her front yard. Just a real amazing, amazing economical use of her front space here. We're going to get around and check out some of the really cool things that she's got growing here. And sit down with her and talk a little bit about her and her gardening show. <laughs> so this 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 uh, this tomato cage has seen worse for wear, and so I ordered more red paint, and he's touching it up because it's going to be out front, and I want everything to look nice. Got back from Phoenix, and I had a hankering for more fruit trees, and the question is, in my garden, where on earth are they going to go? But I think I figured it out. All right, everybody, here we are in Kay's Cozy Corner with Kay Cottrell from the Kay Cottrell uh, Late Bloomer Urban Garden. Organic Garden Show. Organic <laughs> Garden Show, yes. <laughs> I know, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Excellent, but you have a beautiful little spot here for this Thank interview. You. Thank you for having us here at your home garden. This is a beautiful, beautiful garden you have set up. Well, I'm so glad I'm you're here after we've painted the cozy corner. Yes, yes, I saw that on a recent episode, right. yes, and I did want to see. Much it did turn out very well. Yeah, it very, needs a second well. coat, but... A second coat, but hey, it looks really nice as it is right now. Thank you. Definitely. So you do have a really, really beautiful front yard garden here. It's packed with lots and lots of different things, as we've shown clips of here. Um, can you tell us what you got going on right now? Yes. Well, I just came back from Phoenix, and I will be rolling out four or five videos. I've already got one online, and I've got two more edited. And every time I come back from Phoenix, I am so keen to plant more tropical fruit trees yep. and I love trees you that the, in leaves... the area for it you got to <laughs> well it, it's not great where I am I'm close to the ocean and tropical fruit trees some do well some just not enough sun and heat yeah. you know okay and so as you can see my orange tree is tall enough now to always grab the sun my lemon tree is in shade most of the winter <laughs> <laughs> but I picked up a papaya tree and this is getting planted today Yes, now what I realized about papaya is this is something that might I might be able to incorporate in my garden. I actually sell it, I didn't realize this, because I only saw single trunks in uh, Jack's yard, but they sell it with three trunks together. Oh wow. And because you need it for pollination. And oh, so So yes, that makes sense. These trunks get that big around in five years but they get 20 feet tall and all the foliage is at the top right so i'm thinking i can put it right here yeah and it can get up higher than everything else i think this looks like a great spot for and it. so that's my plan all right all right <laughs> and so we're we'll doing have that to do lunch. that we'll have to do that i'll help you out with that okay sounds good excellent you've been uh, on youtube now for several years creating yeah. your channel and everything. <laughs> I've seen a lot of your episodes and I hope that a lot of our audience goes and checks out Kay's channel and checks out her uh, gardening uh, 
show that she does there. It's just a wonderful show. You get to see all these great, wonderful things that she gets and has growing here in her front yard. So could you tell us a little bit about um, your uh, adventure onto uh, YouTube? Well, when I started the garden, I started on YouTube, and I'm not sure who said to do what. I remember someone said, if you're on YouTube, you've got to have a blog, and I thought, oh boy, I've got to have a website, <laughs> and, and then there's all the social media that came with it, and you don't know what you're getting into when you right. get, and, and YouTube has completely changed since I started. So what was true for me back then is not true today. Right. And so it's a much different ball game. I started by making a show. I had a post-production team of editor, sound editor, and composer, and motion graphics artist, and what I wanted was a show, and what I created was five to ten minute episodes, 20 a year for five years, just like a TV show, and it had a jingle and a sign-off, just like a TV show, mm -hmm. and, and I had bloopers, and I had animations for the and it kids. And sounds a little bit of some of the things that I do, other than the animations yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you need an animator. I throw in the <laughs> bloopers, so watch out for that. Uh-oh. <laughs> And so I, I just decided from the beginning I wanted to appeal to families with children and as well as late bloomers like me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought they could look forward to the animations, you know, and every time I would come across a new insect in my garden, I would have her animate it. I would get uh, photo, send her photos and she would animate it. You know, so I have worms and slugs yeah. and monarch butterfly and all of these <laughs> things would appear in the credits or near the end and you know it was it was so much fun i loved making the show yes yeah, so it was really really nice and the whole format and everything and yeah. you really put some real good time and effort into making that sort of thing but over time you've kind of had to change the way you've done things haven't exactly you? exactly and i i was going to say that the funnest that's not a word but the right. most fun thing <laughs> about doing the show is collaboration yes you know i come from an entertainment background and i love making films and working with other creative artists and coming together and everybody brings their best work yes and um, you wind up with a great product right exactly I I, <laughs> I really can't agree more that's just it's just yeah. the whole fun for me and just getting started because our channel is pretty new and we've just been getting going mm -hmm. has been the getting out and meeting um, different people and getting to meet this great wonderful garden community out there and especially now has been working on and collaborating with other YouTubers and trying to get to meet other people that I spent years watching as I was developing my channel right. or my garden right you know what I right. mean and learning the different aspects of how I'm gardening through watching a lot of your videos and other YouTubers out there who are producing videos too it's really inspiring for me to get out and become a creator myself so right. that I have to kind of thank you for, for getting oh, well, out there thanks. and doing that <laughs> and giving me some inspiration. We've talked about your garden channel as it got started. I didn't know that YouTube's changed a little bit and so is your channel. Could you talk about, about that a little bit? Sure. Um, about two years ago, YouTube changed its analytics and now it's all about longer videos and many, many of them. And it's impossible to have that, a workflow where you have to rely on other people and their schedules you've just got to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I have gone from gardening three or four days a week mm -hmm. in my spare time to gardening one day a week with a helper, garden helper, and spending five days editing. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's, it's really changed a lot. As Excellent. for my garden, I mentioned that uh, every time I've been to Phoenix, I come back with a desire to plant more <laughs> fruit trees. 
and uh, yeah they have a lot of like you said I've watched a several different channels amazing. and stuff that they're doing mm -hmm. a lot of that uh, food forest type yep. of thing in the Phoenix area where you would imagine yeah you they call see it those the valley things. but the valley is so wide it takes over an hour to drive from one side of the valley to the other but they they lump everything Scottsdale Phoenix Tempe Mesa it's all the valley right. so there are so many food growers in the valley yeah I've been really surprised about seeing a lot of that you know you wouldn't think but it's a real popular there's a lot of real popular uh, urban gardeners I know uh, there's a, one guy I watched down there who does a lot of like interviews and things named Greg Peterson. He's someone to look at. He's a real good guy. Well, I YouTube. interviewed Greg and he interviewed me. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. He was one of my first ones, yeah. He's one I like to listen to because he does put out a cool um, podcast and all of that as well. You right, know, for which I was in, but he, he, uh, his business is, is marketing those fruit trees. Right. So he's the one that got a lot of people interested in believing that they could actually grow fruit trees in the desert. Yeah. But uh, as I go, when I started, I was much more focused on annuals in my garden. Yeah. But now it's really going towards perennials and going towards the food forest idea. And I won't be planting 40 tomato plants next year no. or 40 pepper plants. That oh. will not happen. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I probably so. won't grow as many as I did last year, but yeah. I definitely, definitely. Something for me in my area, though, I'm mm -hmm. definitely loving and growing tomatoes all the time. So that's something. Well, I love it. Nothing, there's nothing I love more. But when you're short on space and you're short on sun, it makes it hard to grow tomatoes. Yes, and you're, you're really creating that sort of environment for a food forest anyways already as you can tell with the way right. it is so right i've got a lot of shade happening here yep yep <laughs> with so. my perennials and there's just not enough sun if, if it's something that will grow fast and grow tall so like now the you're cow probably going to be looking for underlayer type of perennials as well to kind of come up underneath of some of the different trees and everything well i already have comfrey i have quite a bit of comfrey and that's growing all over that just needs sun and it does need a fair amount of water um, which is you know when you're in drought it's a little bit harder to keep comfrey happy yeah uh, but it's so healthy comfrey that anybody that can grow it should be growing it not only is it healthy for your plants you can make compost tea but uh, it the roots bring the roots go very deep on comfrey and you plant them around your fruit trees and it brings nutrients back up to your fruit trees okay. so and I, when i broke my arm right remember there. when i broke my arm yes in uh, december i broke my arm and everybody wrote me and said you've got to do comfrey poultices oh, wow. so i started doing poultices of comfrey on my shoulder that very messy good. very messy doesn't yeah. smell great <laughs> i can't imagine it does i can't imagine it does at all but it helped out uh, who knows? Who knows? You, you never know if what you do made it better because you only have the one experience, you know. Right, right. I guess I you don't want to have to break your other arm to I'd, find out, right? I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent case. So, um, where uh, do you think you're going next with your gardens here and YouTube and all of that? You. Well, um, I know you've been out traveling around and visiting some people a lot, and that's something that you really do plenty on your channel and all of that yeah. so is there I'm, anybody coming up or anything like that that you might have going on well what I have coming up is I'm because I broke my arm and because I got behind uh, with my editing from last year I am just finishing my Germany videos I have wonderful Germany videos some of the best films that I've ever made yes. and I went to cast everything from backyard gardens backyard little allotment gardens to castle gardens so I would love for everybody to check yes, out that series. Yes, you've got to check that stuff out. That's a, I, I, I could only dream of being able to take those types of a garden adventures on my channel. It would be so great. And it's really awesome that you've done those things so that we have something to watch and check out and see those sort of uh, Well, I am very fortunate that I, that I was able to go. And I go very inexpensively, but I do go. Yes. Because, you know, life is short and... If I can bring some inspiration to somebody else that can't travel, then I want to try to do that while I'm able. The other thing I have coming up is I'm finishing up my South Carolina, my, my Southeast videos. Oh, I didn't finish those either. So wow. my very next video is from Columbia, South Carolina. Oh my. And it's a wonderful church, veggie garden, and all the vegetables go to the community. 
and um, it's a wonderful, I, I love this video. You'll love this guy, Lou, in that video. And, wow. and then I have several more from that series. And so I'm going to, I'm pushing myself to finish all of my 2017 <laughs> You've got travels. a lot of stuff in the can already, Before don't 2018 you? 2018 is oh, over. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, because you got probably some really good things coming up for 2018 so it'd be great to catch up with some of the things that you've already done it sounds like you've got some really really wonderful videos for everybody to come check out because you've really really got to check out Kay's videos she does a wonderful job thank really you. great personality um, all right so Kay I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the thank Urban you for Garden. watching yes yes it's been so wonderful like the video your, your garden is so <laughs> wonderful yes if anybody has any questions comments concerns or anything at all please hit me up in the comment section down below and like she said big big thumbs up for Kay joining us here on the Urban Gardener and don't forget hit the subscribe button down below follow along with more garden adventures as we continue growing here on the Urban Gardener and we'll see you again on the next episode. Cheers. One level, can't quite figure that out. It's just a little bit high on the right side. Mm -hmm. It's okay. What is that? You got mail or something? Somebody. A delivery? Oh, it could be the mail. Get us in real quick and then, Go ahead. I'll, then Start I'll again. Say, okay, yep, you got it. Okay. Here we have the fittings. He's got music. Yeah, let's wait. All right. You can cut it. What I've got here is. <laughs> They're really testing us, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is my luck anyways. This is the way it works for me all the time. Uh, it's an urban garden. It's trucks, planes, trains, this is what no, you gotta no deal trains. With. But for creating, it's just like, oh, come on. Just give me a minute. Just a minute. I know. I know. One minute. One <laughs> sentence, one minute. Uh, oh, in... Uh, boy, I might be distracted with that thing. <laughs> yep. Let's, let's work, too. Three trees.